I'm going to be reading Touch the Sky Alice Coachman Olympic High Jumper by Anne Malspina. Alice Coachman raced down the dirt road, bare feet flying, long legs spinning, braids flapping in the wind. Leap! She sailed over a tree branch and kept on running. Back home, Papa was angry. Bare feet shouldn't fly. Long legs shouldn't spin. Braids shouldn't flap in the wind. Sit on the porch and be a lady, Papa scolded Alice. Mama, who worked from morning till night, gave her chores. Cooking breakfast, picking cotton, gathering plums and pecans to make ends meet. Hard times had come to Albany, Georgia in the 1930s. There was always more work to do. At school, when the bell rang for recess, Alice burst outside to play basketball with the boys. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Alice wanted to touch the sky. Alice's teacher saw something special in that never sit still girl. She took her to a track meet where a boy leaped over a crossbar into a pile of sawdust. Inch by inch, the bar rose higher. Inch by inch, the boy jumped higher too. The high jump, someone said. Alice's feet tingled, wanting to try. Field shut, track shut. Door shut to girls like Alice. No place to practice, no crossbar to raise. Alice and her friends got busy, knotting rags, tying rags to sticks, planting sticks in the red Georgia clay. Then her friends stood back and let Alice jump. One day, a man came by to collect the rent. He saw Alice, bare feet flying, long legs spinning, braids flapping in the yard. Evelyn, that girl's gonna jump over the moon one of these days, he said to Mama. The moon was so far from Albany where Mama saved pennies because there weren't ever enough. But a dream is a beginning. And as Alice grew older, her dream was to soar. Good news, the high school coach needed a jumper, a high flying star grabbing bar crossing jumper for a trip to the Tuxie Relays in Alabama. Alice's teachers bought her shoes to run in, shorts, and bright white socks. If she was gonna touch the sky, she needed all that. Her heart raced when she saw them. The sprinters, javelin throwers, distance runners, the finest young black athletes in all the South. The referee called her name and Alice got ready. Go, set, go. Up, up, up. Over the crossbar she flew. Inch by inch, the bar rose higher. Inch by inch, Alice jumped higher too. When she won first place, Coach Clev Abbott asked her to join his famous team, the Tugsy Golden Tigrets, for one meet, the biggest meet of the year. September 3rd, 1939, the American Athletic Union National Championship, Waterbury, Connecticut. Stretching her long legs, Alice sucked on a sour lemon. The lemon made her feel lightning fast, feather light, moon jumping strong. That day, Alice won her first national medal. When Alice got back to Albany, Papa was proud, but he wanted her home. Mama admired her medal, but wanted her to stay humble. One day, Coach Abbott came by to invite her to enroll at Tugsy. Papa said no. Alice held her breath. No more picking cotton, no more gathering plums and pecans. Best of all, she trained with the Tigrets. Finally, Papa nodded, yes. He had to let her go. At Tugsey Institute High School, Alice practiced her jumps and studied hard. 
To pay her fees, Alice sewed, mopped the gym, and rolled the tennis courts. Always she thought about Mama working so hard so Alice could rise high. Traveling wasn't easy for the Golden Tigrets. White's only restaurant shut, restrooms shut to girls like them. They ate supper on the roadside. After dark, they hurried on. Together, the team held strong, laughing, teasing, having fun. When they got to the meets, all that mattered was sprinting, throwing, running, jumping. No one jumped higher than Alice, national champion, shining star. Still, Alice felt tingled, feet tingled. One dream hung in the sky. She wanted an Olympic medal, but World War II was raging and the games were canceled. After peace came in 1945, Alice wondered, was she still the best or has her time passed? July 1948, the Olympic trials, Providence, Rhode Island. Alice stood at the high jump pit. Her back hurt, one last jump. Her legs were sore, the most important jump so far. One jump to make the Olympic team. She sucked on a lemon and took off. Bare feet flying, long legs spinning in the wind. Alex scaled the bar at five feet, four and three quarters of an inch. An Olympic trials record. A week later, Alice sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, an official member of the US Olympic women's track and field team. July 29, 1948, Wembley Stadium, London. King George of England stood to speak. I could proclaim, open the Olympic Games of London. Trumpets sounded. The Olympic flag was raised and cannons thundered. In the field, Alice paraded with her team and 4,000 athletes from 59 countries flags waving, flames burning, pigeons flying into the blue. The Olympics had begun and Alice's dreams was almost here. The games sped by. No gold medal for Alice's team so far. The high jump was the last event. Glory was up to her. Alice squeezed a lemon she stretched her long right legs and touched her toes. The lemon and God's will give me luck, she said to herself. That's all I need. Inch by inch, the bar rose higher. 19 women took their turns. Inch by inch, Alice jumped higher too. Finally, only two were left. England's champion, Dorothy Tyler, and Alice, Albany star. It was Alice's turn. The crowd held its breath. Up, up, up. Over the crossbar she flew, setting a new Olympic record of five feet, six and one eighth of an inch. Dorothy took two jumps to clear the same height, putting Alice ahead. When they both missed the next jump, the contest was over. Alice has won the gold. As she climbed to the top of the winner stand, the crowd rose. For the bare feet flying, long legs spinning, moon jumper from Georgia, Alice had finally touched the sky.